Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, uh, August 13th business meeting of the Grosio Township Board of Trustees. The board uh, convinced, originally convinced, convened the meeting at 6.30. We've been in closed session in the pressure cooker next door since then. Uh, we are returning to open session at this time, so I'll call the meeting to order at 8 o'clock. The board, entire board is present. Let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. For the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, moving on. At this time, I'll entertain additions and deletions to tonight's agenda. I'll begin with saying that the board previously voted to add a closed session on a uh, court case that we're involved in. That was discussed in closed session. Uh, with that, we have one more we'd like to consider. Mr. Budney? Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I'd like to add uh, consent agenda number five, appointment of a new member uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, moved by Trustee Budney, seconded, uh, uh, seconded by Treasurer Van Oss. Those in favor of adding the appointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals to the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. That will be added. Any other additions or deletions to tonight's agenda from the board? Supervisor, I would ask that we uh, withdraw action item number one, purchase of open space greenways for further information and analysis. Okay, moved by Trustee Bletcher, seconded by Trustee Budney. Um, this was also discussed in closed session. To more time for information on this subject, uh, those in favor of deleting action item number one from tonight's agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Now, offered that will be del deleted, continuing our conversation in the pressure cooker. Okay, with that, any other additions or deletions to tonight's agenda? Then offered those in favor of approving the consent, the, I'm sorry, the agenda as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda stands as amended. With that, I'll open up to brief public comment tonight, limited to tonight's agenda items. Public comment on tonight's agenda items. Okay, I see none offered. We'll, uh, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Mr. Treasurer. Uh, thank you, Brian. I'd like to... <coughs> Make a motion to approve consent agenda 18-041, which includes the minutes of the July 23rd, 2018 regular meeting, check register dated through August 10th, 2018, a approval to process and distribute payments through September 1st, 2018, and retention of EPA on go seal. And adding the new action, uh, consent agenda number five. Oh, I'm sorry, an appointment uh, of a new member for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Well, you Support. Yeah. Support. Oh, All right. Okay, so the, we have the motion for the consent agenda, seconded by uh, Trustee Budney. Those in favor of approving the con any discussion among the board on the consent agenda? Okay, it's not offered. Oh. Same question. Any uh, discussion, questions, answers on the on the on the consent agenda? None offered. Those in favor of approving the consent agenda as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. The consent agenda is approved. With no action items, this should have been a short meeting. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll move right to the clerk's report. Coulda, shoulda, woulda, right? All right. Thank you um, for. 3,769 of you, it's not a surprise that there was an election on Tuesday because uh, 3,769 3, voters voted in the primary election last Tuesday, which is 42.6% of our registered voter, which is huge, might I say, huge for a primary uh, on Gross Hill. So um, 
congratulations, first of all, to all the great voters on this island for coming out. Um, we had some challenges on Election Day. Um, it had nothing to do with Russians unless they control the weather. Um, we had no power at precincts one and two for the majority of the day. Um, the Presbyterian Church, as a large portion of the north end of the island, was without electrical power um, from uh, about one in the morning until about 4.30 in the afternoon. But as everybody found out, we have contingency plans. We are ready for this. And um, even though a generator was offered, um, we are fully capable of running a non-electrified election. And um, what we did discover is that there's two separate circuits at the church, one um, connected to a cell tower. So late in the day, we discovered that there was one plug one plug that we could go to to plug in our tabulators. And so starting at about 4 um, four o'clock, we were going to start tabulating on that one plug. Just as we got it hooked up, the power was restored. Of course, you know that always happens. So um, it worked out very well. Um, all the uh, precincts were able to reconcile the number of uh, voters with the number of ballots. Um, if it ever came down to it, we could look at every single paper ballot and create a paper trail um, for every voter. So I'm, I'm very, you know, this was Brian's and my first election pretty much um, as the clerk's duo. We had a lot of help from our assistant, Gail Hager. We have a tremendous team of, of election inspectors that come out for, you know, not real wages. I mean, they really do work for pizza and donuts. Um, and considering they put in a 12-hour day, um, you know, the stipend that they get at the end of the day doesn't amount to very much. They do it because they love the process and they're giving back to the community. Um, as you know, the, the votes are... Um, uh, uh, posted on the township website. I think what's really interesting is um, just a couple of things, is that the greatest number of voters that voted on a millage had to do with our drain renewal and stormwater management. That was the topic that got people, you know, more excited than the other topics. So, um, but I think all of the margins were very healthy for the yes votes. And, but we do always acknowledge that there is the minority no vote, and we always operate uh, keeping that in mind. What is that message to the, to the organization? Finally, um, I did want to uh, talk to you about, well, Brian actually brought it up, but November election, a lot of your kids who are just graduated high school and are going off to college are going to want to vote and um, being youthful and full of energy and fervor, uh, they're going to want to register to vote, and they might get approached by some organization or other on campus that is going to give them a registration, and they're going to think they're all set to vote and get an absentee ballot, and we're going to have to say, we don't know you, we've never seen you, your signature is not on file, I'm sorry, you can't vote. So... Please know that first-time absentee voters, no matter what age, they have to at some point have voted in person at a precinct where their signature was um, confirmed, or they have to present themselves at a Secretary of State's office or at a Township Clerk's office to just make sure that their signature and their face are on file with the department, and, and that solves a big part of that problem. So as uh, Deputy Clerk Friel has said here, to eliminate election day issues, verify that your student is registered to vote, where they are registered to vote. You can visit the Michigan Voter Information Center on the Secretary of State website. I think you can get to that from our website. If they are registering by mail before election day, anybody who registers by mail needs to stop by any Secretary of State's office or a local clerk's office and have a state, I'm sorry, a staff member identify them, which means looking at picture ID and your signature and you. 
Be careful um, of signing forms that will change the municipality that you are registered to vote in. So if your college is in Lansing and you're signing a form uh, that registers you to vote in Lansing um, and then you happen to come back to Gross Seal or whatever, you may not be eligible to vote except where you signed up that form. If you have multiple residences, this sometimes occurs. Your voting regist your registered voting residence is, I think, where your car is, is registered, your main household. If requesting an absent voter ballot, um, and if the ballot must be issued by mail, the application for the ballot must reach us no later than 2 p.m. on the Saturday prior to the election. Remember, it still has to get mailed back to you and then mailed back to us. So when you're asking for an absentee um, voter ballot from a long distance plan ahead for the mail service or, or FedEx, um, of course, you can always hand it in in person, um, but you can't have somebody else hand it in or pick it up for you. you we can only give it to you. So um, election 101 comes to an end. There will be a quiz at the end of this meeting. Um, beyond that, thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Treasurer. <clears throat> thank you, Brian. Uh, for the month of June, Gross Hill had a total of $16,183,655 invested in various accounts. Uh, you can go to my website, and it'll show you where all the accounts are, where all the money is invested. It generated a, <clears throat> an interest income of $42,054. That's a little inflated because we took one of the bond payment that, or the, the bond distributions that we got while we were waiting for the West River Road program to start, and we invested that into a short-term CD, and that gave us a little bigger than average but the average uh, interest rate was uh, 1.19. And any time we have funds that we can, we know we're going to hold on to for a while, we, we look for alternative ways to invest that money to improve the, uh, my goal is to get that up considerably higher now that some of those restrictions have been lifted by the state. Uh, <clears throat> And most, all of this information can be obtained on my website, grossseal.com, go to the treasurer's website. Uh, <clears throat> the treasurer's office has been busy collecting summer pet tax payments. Summer 2018 property taxes are due September the 14th, 2017. An extension for the summer tax due is available for those who qualify. The defer deferment application must be submitted by De September 14th, 2018. Summer tax deferment applications are available to Treasurer's Office. See Annette, she'll walk you through the process. Approved deferments will be <coughs> extended, uh, this will extend the se September 14th due date until February 14th, 2019. As of today, we've collected 17% of the 2018 summer tax rolls, and distribution of the school and county taxes have been made timely. Uh, we have a Commerce Park meeting on the 20th, I believe, third Monday. Uh, if you get a chance, there's always issues that we talk about in there that are interesting to the community, and I have nothing else. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Uh, moving on to Trustee Liaison Reports, Mr. Nelson. As usual, I like to uh, bring up uh, Ms. O'Farrell and uh, her able assistant, Chad. I have to give him a title here. Uh, one thing back to the election, uh, there might be a rumor around that uh, because Brian was new on the job that uh, we kind of set him up to maybe see how he did, but it seems like it worked out pretty good. Good evening, uh, Township Board. Um, I would first like to start by thanking the community for the support. Do that. Move down. <laughs> no, I move. No. Um, good evening, trustees. Um, I just want to start off by thanking the community for the support of our millage. Very important to um, the community, our department, as the recreation department. 
We are striving to get better every day with our financials, um, our building maintenance, and our programming and events. So just a sincere thank you to the community for that support. And I know you wanted to. I want to thank everybody too for voting for that millage too with the recreation department. Kim has some uh, updated information on events that we'd like to share with you. So if you want to put the Halloween over there, I'll take that one and then you can take the rest of them. We are planning a joint event with recreation commission and the festival commission and it's going to be the haunted hangar down here in the, at the hangar that we do for F Island Fest. Uh, you can see the tickets are $30 per person, 50 per couple. They're available at GrosdaleRecreation.com. The phone number's there. It is 21 and over. We've already reached out to Duncan and the, the uh, and Joey. So we have the fire and the police. I'm sorry, Chief Porcerelli and <laughs> Duncan. All right. And uh, the... The chiefs, the chiefs. So we're working diligently with them. So if there's any questions, they, uh, it is a costume contest with cash prizes. There will be finger foods, live entertainment, a DJ lineup, decorations on a grand scale. It is a spectacular event with a cash bar, and it's 21 and over, so we're not going to be worrying with the, uh, you like the spectacular, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so we, and, and, and the best part of this is, the majority of the funds we're going to use for the ice rink debt that we have at Water's Edge, and, cool. and that's our goal with that, and also with Mike Duker, the airport manager, to have some funds to go towards Memorial Gardens. So everybody mark your calendar, Haunted Hangar, Saturday, October 27th, between the Rec Commission and Festival Commission. Thank you. Um, just a couple of other things that, you know, summer's winding down for recreation. We have three weeks to go. So I, I know I don't want to put a damper on the summer, but we do. Um, so please come out. The, the, the weather's still beautiful. The golf course is in fantastic shape. And I want to thank my golf course staff for that. The pool, everything is working properly. We had some mechanical issues this, this summer, but water's warm. The concession stand is open, so please enjoy Water's Edge while you still can. Three weeks to go, and then the snow's flying. So, um, Also, we uh, brought back the car shows on Tuesday nights. This is starting to grow. We brought them back two weeks ago. So the car show is on two, every Tuesday through August from 5.30 to 7.30. So if you have a car, bring your car, or if you just want to get a night out, just come up and check the cars out. So... Um, and then also the summer concert series continues. Smokies is the sponsors for the last two concerts. Category 5 is this Thursday at 7 o'clock. And then we end the summer on August 23rd with Wisteria. Um, and then also just a couple of things. The new brochure, we're in the final stages. Um, I actually have a proof. So the new profile, the one that you see up on the screen now, we are having four mini magazines between the program guides that we offer. So every resident should have received this book, and this is a mini magazine, a mini profile, with parks and rec um, coverage. It covered Island Fest. It, it just kind of covered everything going on on the island. So that's something new that we put together. And then at the end of the month, at the end of August, will be the actual program guide, the profile, with the fall and winter events through Parks and Recreation. So just, uh, I had a couple calls today. Well, where's all the stuff in this magazine? Where's where's the uh, the uh, programs? And I said, this is the mini magazine. It's just informative. And then the next magazine coming out at the end of August will have all Parks and Rec fall and winter events. So just to give everyone a heads up on that. So, and again, just thank you for the support on the millage. It means so much to myself, my department, and being part of the community. Thank you. Yes. Before you go, um, the um, the concert series on the lawn, yes. it's it's amazing. I, cool. It's full. It, it's like it's starting to look like pine knob, and I still stick to pine knob. Uh, but you know, it's really for for Grosseal to see that many people come out on a Thursday night. Really, really remarkable. Thank you, and your whole team. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Farrell, Mr. Nelson, uh, Mr. Bletcher. 
Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I have the pleasure of sitting on two separate commissions. The first, Open Space Greenways, did not meet in uh, July. We will be um, meeting again in September. We do have a vacancy on Open Space Greenways. So again, if anybody is interested, come down to the township, pick up an application, and we'd love to have uh, somebody come in and fill that vacancy who has a lot of energy and a lot of interest in Open Space Greenways. Second commission I have the pleasure of sitting on is with the Girls Eel Police Department. I'd like to first of all say thank you for everybody out there that voted. Thank you for your support. Um, and I'd also like to thank uh, Chief Porcerelli as well as uh, Bob Zelasco, Commissioner, for the work that they did in putting together that uh, video that is available. Uh, I commend them for the work that they did. It was great. It's professional. If you haven't seen it, take the time. Um, look for it on the web. But most importantly, thank you for voting. Thank you again to Chief and uh, Mr. Zelasco for the work that they've done. And most importantly, thank you for the community for the support. We view these as referendums on how we're doing and your support was greatly appreciated. And thank you for everything that you do for us to allow us to help do things for you. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Bletcher. Move on to Mr. Buddy. Thank you, Brian. Uh, first, the, the bad news or the sad news, no ZBA again. Even though we just put a new member on the board, uh, she can start off by not having a meeting. Uh, we do have a DPS meeting tomorrow, uh, 7 o'clock, here in the boardroom, and we will be uh, basically going over updates on our various projects, including the West River Road project where uh, we're getting ready to uh, put, on, put down the new road. So uh, come and join us or tune in. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Budney. Uh, Mr. Malvesto. Thank you. Well... This is the, uh, the upcoming weekend is the uh, island-wide garage sale. It also happens to be the BPEC Commission's uh, Walk the Path event. Uh, the purpose of it is to encourage people to get on the path with their kids, with their dogs, walk up and down, greet their neighbors, have a great time, and uh, meet at the commons. Uh, we're going to have free hot dogs, lemonade, uh, live entertainment, uh, some other things for the kids. But it gives you a chance to get out and enjoy what we have uh, and, uh, again, get a good hot dog or two. The, um, this also happens to coincide with the Wayne State bike ride, the, the Baradour, and the, uh, the, the, the hardiest of the group uh, riding 100 and some miles that day, and they will come on to Grozeal. Their turnaround will be the common, so if you see some br flashes of bright lights, uh, that will be the, uh, the riders. They'll be, they'll be you know, in and gone very quickly. But come on down. It's the 18th. The hours are between 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Barry Van Eglin will be our source of entertainment. I think most people know who Barry is. Um, it's been well received, but can be some, some people doing some hard work and uh, grilling some hot dogs for you. Uh, the fire, fire department, I don't have the exact numbers, but I can tell you one thing. Uh, their, average, their call average has not gone down. If anything, it's probably gone up. Uh, the guys are they're on the go all the time. You know, it's always a keep in mind uh, that they're out there working for us all hours of day and night. It's 24-7, 365 days a year. There's no rest for those guys. So uh, thanks, Chief. Thanks to your group. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Melvesto. We'll move on to Township Attorney, Mr. Sorty. Uh, Mr. Reum. Arjdik is out of town and wanted me to let everyone know that there are no legal fees on this evening's payment list. Um, one of the comments I wanted to share with the board regarding the West River project, um, past week and a half I've had n numerous requests and um, inquisitions, if you will, from residents about ditches. Um, the, the original plans had ditches in different locations. Um, that they have been removed. They've been able to um, rework the plans. Uh, the um, DPS Commission along with Wayne County um, field supervisors were able to have an emergency meeting and they made some some changes that uh, I wanted to report to the board and the residents to let them know that the ditches, um, although they were limited, are not going to be part of this project. And 
Um, obviously, the um, Wayne County has um, again inspected the Parkway Bridge. There's no changes to their plans that they've reported to us, and we don't as anticipate anything. They're going through that process and the press release that w w was issued not too long ago. Um, everything is still um, in, in order. But I did also, related to the bridge topic, I want everyone to know um, that uh, the chiefs, the police and fire, um, have been working tirelessly putting together additional emergency contingency plans for the bridges. And, what, and they're looking at different scenarios for different areas. Obviously, there's interior bridges that the county is going to be doing work on. There's some interior bridges they have closed. We're looking at site-specific possibilities, and we're planning for them. So we've already had meetings with Wayne County Emergency Management, State Police, obviously with the waterways, um, the uh, Department of Environmental Equality, Army Corps of Engineer, and th the intention is to have th these types of emergencies planned. So if necessary, it's a matter of phone call to Lansing and things are activated. So. Um, I just thought it was important to let the board and the community know that those are the types of things that are being done in anticipation and hopes of never ever needing them. But um, we, we do take the um, planning uh, very, very seriously. So with that, um, nothing else to add. Thank you. Close Labor Day. <laughs> we are closed Labor Day. Closed Our next closed. board meeting is September 10th. <laughs> One question. The... Uh, bridge over West River, the little bridge. Anything from the county on that? Still no change. That's one of, I, th I believe, there are four or five in the in the county like that. And they're having the same types of stress and problems on all of them. I guess they're all similar to the same age, too. And they're not 100% sure if they have a rebuild plan or if they just have to replace them. So they have a consultant specifically working on that project, I'm told. So their intention is when they do work on the Parkway Bridge, they're only anticipating limited closures, limited lane closures, and they're going to try to time that out. So when they have a closure there, they're going to do closures as well on the overpass. It all sounds good, but until it all comes <laughs> together. So, but at, at least they're... They are thinking of those types of things. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Mr. Riem. Um, so it's up to me. Um, bridges, the, the bridge in question, and there are others throughout there, it's referred to as a DAPT end bridge. I'll let you guys Google that, look it up. But it's a, it is a method of bridge construction. It's a DAPT end. And apparently there are stresses developing in the DAPT ends that they're not exactly sure uh, what's the proper course to remediate. So... Look up DAPT and bridges. I'm learning so many things in this job. Um, but important stuff, moving away from the, the fear of bridges to the fear of McLeod. Uh, today, I got this from Brian Kelly from the EPA. And it's the EPA is kind of driving the fight on the settlement agreement, uh, the negotiated settlement, which is ongoing. But from Brian, the settlement agreement should be published in the Federal Register tomorrow or Wednesday. A pr press release and newspaper advertisement will follow shortly after. Uh, he will send me a copy of the agreement as soon as it's published. And he is willing to attend a board meeting if we would like him to come. What he is asking from us, what I'm asking from you, our residents, um, they're putting together a fact sheet and and going to answer or attempting to answer the anticipated questions what they want to know is what questions do you have about first of all the settlement agreement and then i think by extension what the proposals which nobody knows what the proposals are now but there's only so much you can do at that site so what questions you would have what information you would want as residents uh going forward on both the remediation and the development of that site if you would, and if it, if it crosses your mind, if there's something that's gnawing at you that we haven't answered thus far, call me or email me with your question. I will get it to Mr. Kelly. Uh, this is working up and down the EPA. They want to put this together concisely so that when eventually when the public hearing is held, they'll know 
what your concerns are. They will ha either have answers for your concerns or they'll know that they have to find answers for your concerns. So please, if there's something gnawing at you, let me know what it is. I will get that to my contacts in the EPA and let them do their jobs, find the answers, find the data. And when they publish the opening of the uh, public comment period, you will find that out as soon as I do. When they schedule the public hearing, which they have to do, um, you will know that as soon as I do. Please attend. Please uh, uh, post your comments. They have to address this, the, the realistic comments. And uh, from there, we get into a proposal for development that goes to the city of Trenton. And then it's the ball somewhat in their court. And they will have planning commission hearings and other public hearings on that also. And we will be invited. So, well, I mean, they're open, so we're all invited. But when I find out about them, you'll find out about them. Uh, we have three communities that are, two that are directly involved. Trenton, of course, where most of the site is. Riverview, which a smaller portion of the site is. And as Brian Kelly described it, Grosseal is an interested, affected community. We're right across the river, and we're downwind. So, and I thank him for keeping us in the loop as much as possible and inviting us to the table. Uh, he has, there was really no legal requirement for that, but it was the best way to do business. So, again, my thanks to him for that. Well, with that, uh, Mr. Melvesta mentioned the garage sale. Uh, we will have Margie says she has 90 people signed up so far. But since it's not the last minute, the other 60 will probably sign up sometime this week. We consistently had about 150 on it, and there will be more. So there will be a lot of traffic. It's going to be a busy weekend. We're going to have the cyclists. We're going to have people who've never been here driving, looking for addresses and Googling stuff while they're attempting to drive. Uh, please just be advised, it's going to be a busy weekend for traffic, for, uh, for visitors, for cyclists. So please extend your usual courtesy to visitors to the island. Um, probably had something else, but not that important. So with that, I'll close off my report. Uh, I've been out of town touring on a boat tour for two weeks. Saw some absolutely beautiful country, but it was nice to come motoring back down the river and seeing the plush green island of Gros Seal. It was, it was good to be home. So with that, open it up to uh, public comment. And we have a big crowd tonight, so I'm sure there's some... In fact, I'll, I'll invite Mr. Ponty to come up and introduce his guest, and then we'll open it to public comments. Since he was nice enough to send me a letter saying he'd be here, My name is Peter Timothy Ponta, uh, 20428 East River Road, uh, Gross Seal resident for 21 years. And one of the people that was influential in getting me to Gross Seal was Carlos Perdue and his wife Esther. Um, Carlos uh, is my godfather, was. And we had a session back in 2003 where I was trying very desperately to get Carlos to lower his expectations on 41 acres of property uh, just south of the pay bridge um, which I was hoping to be a park uh, to make a park uh, much like the five gross points each have uh, it's half wetlands and it's half solid walkable land and back then uh, Dale and I were working on it back then um, the total price of that project was going to be four million bucks all in with development and half of that was not going to be under our care, custody, and control. What I've suggested to the Purdue family, Joyce, Dolores, and Patty, is that if we lower expectations, cut the price in half to two times SEV, which is less than most of us would accept for our property, uh, in the neighborhood of one, uh, $1,350,000 to a million five in that range, that we could do that as an island with some eleemosynary help from many of us, uh, and also with a millage that would be no larger than what we spend to rent the Trenton Library. Um, and in four years, it would pay for this 41 acres. If I was Island King, uh, I would sell um, parcels that would apply to residential housing and to use that money to buy a 41-acre park. Now, I've talked to uh, Carl about it and to Dale back in November, gave him the first booklet. Uh, we had some good concepts and in, in, in some back and forth. I've given a second booklet to each of you, and I have other books for people on the island. 
Uh, ironically, uh, some of the folks that are most supportive of this are the folks that can't sit at the water side in their cars without violating private property or in the church parking lot or trespassing. And I think, uh, I think it'd be a nice thing to have a park. So I wanted to introduce, this is Joyce Purdue Helms. She's the president and chairman of Advanced Stamping and Engineering in Canton. Uh, she's the only of one of the three daughters that uh, is local. Dolores is in Colorado Springs and Joyce is in um, coming Georgia. But if anybody wants to pursue this, and hopefully we'll get some help on this, um, Joyce is available to consult with me. I'm kind of the lead man on this thing, being a resident and a family friend forever. And uh, we're available and we just wanted to make this presentation that uh, we're here to hopefully get this done. I know there's a lot of things to spend money on. We have a lot of issues. But this is an island asset and I feel that it's a valuable asset to have. And uh, Joyce is here to uh, substantiate the fact that I'm not just talking freely about something I don't own. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ponda. Do you insist, were you, were you going to speak next oh, or just I, say I thanks for your time? Or? I can just say that Grosiel's been a part of my life, most of my life. We started as young kids um, enjoying the Ford Yacht Club and then of course my dad had a vision for what he thought this property could eventually be. So it's, you know, near and dear to my heart and I can see a vision of people here enjoying it and adding to the value of their homes and to their lifestyle here. So I'm hoping that it'll be a possibility uh, and a win-win for all of us. Thank you. Thanks for being here tonight. Okay, uh, further pu public comment, any subject. Mrs. Wyckoff. Okay, so Wyckoff. <laughs> Is that better? Um, Judy Wyckoff, 18048 Park Lane. Um, we actually call it the water-deprived end of Girl Seal because I, I'm not sure you guys are, are familiar or aware of it, but our particular area, we were without water, to the best of my knowledge, nine days out of 31. And that's just really not acceptable. I, you know, I can understand water main break here and there, once a week, but nine days, I think it was nine days out of 31 that we had at least a partial day with no water. And I can just not imagine Mayor Duggan telling the residents of Detroit to make sure you've got a bucket in your bathroom to flush. It just, and, uh, you know, bottles of water to drink out of. So if it's our particular water lines, is there some plan to replace the water lines north of Void on Park Lane? Rodney, do you want to? I mean, you, that would be in your. Yeah, I, and I, I'm not, I'm not familiar with what exactly happened out there, other than I know that you had a, there were a number of. It seems like every day it was Park Lane, Park Lane, Park Lane. Um, there is discussion because we know we have to, we have to do something. <laughs> Uh, you know, along with doing something about the roads, uh, the water lines uh, is something else that we have to do, and we're trying to work up a plan to start replacing those. It doesn't seem to be cost effective either to have these guys come out and just fix, you know, put a well, patch on it. It isn't, it isn't cost effective, but the cost of putting in new lines is very, very expensive, and we don't have the money to do it right now. So we're putting together something so to get the money and have a planned replacement so we're working on that and I you know sorry you had to go through that but uh, and that is part of the problem on that we have on Grozeal we have a lot of old old water lines and so obviously you read my my article yes and uh, what I mentioned towards the end of what we have sleuth to be part of the problem I, I just today got a briefing from Lorinda on the status of the pressure reducing valve, the 24 inch, and not only was it not capable of absorbing the occasional spikes in the transmission lines, it wasn't working at all. So they've got emergency, well, I will call it emergency, we accelerated the replacement, that could be replaced by the end of this week, <clears throat> which 
I mean, that's moving quickly. And I want to thank our DPS staff for and the commission for prioritizing this, making it happen. We've got the funds cut, and we've got a, the low bidder. We should have the the pump in or the the valve uh, tomorrow or the next day, and installation hopefully by the end of the week. So. We're hoping that the older, more fragile lines, which have been the suffering from these pressure spikes that that valve was supposed to control, will be spared until we can replace them and as part of a progressive plan when the dollars are available. I'm, I'm sorry you're in the water deprived end, and, <laughs> and my, my, my recommendation remains, and even I'm, I, haven't, I haven't had a water shortage, but I still, well, I've got a river right out in front. Yours is right across the street, but uh, it's, it's just, you know, and there, and, there, and, there, and there really is no way of knowing where it's going to pop up, where you're going to start having a, you know a lot of breaks. Uh, we've had some spikes from uh, from uh, the uh, Great Lakes water. Uh, we've had the pressure valve and the old lines, uh, none, none which makes for a good situation. I'd also recommend you come tomorrow night to the DPS meeting and uh, indicate to them. So, Mr. Kostick, you know what's going on because that's really where it starts. Well, and he knows. He knows, Jim. I mean, that's not. Believe me, we've been talking about this. This is not and not something you know that's gone gone past us. We've been talking about, it, and that's why you I know need more than one person at the meeting tomorrow night. We're <laughs> trying. We're trying to you know besides trying to do the roads, uh, we know that's a, that is just another thing that has to be done. On another note, real quick, I work the election, and Uda and Brian are so patient and professional, and it was really appreciated. <laughs> so. Thank you, Mrs. Wyckoff. Election or, or water? Water. Okay, what's your name? I'm water deprived, <laughs> North End. Joanne Nortelan, I own two houses on the island, 22271 West River and um, 1775 um, Park Lake. Both of yours are. <laughs> yes, you well, you pick both yes. areas. That's uh, <laughs> so. Um, I first of all, I do want to say I really appreciate the hard work. I see them out there as soon as the water main break starts. Um, one of the comments, though, is it seems like it's breaking in the same spot. They've dug up the same section two doors down from me multiple times. So um, I'm not an engineer. I don't know, but maybe we should look at the methods they're using just in case there's something else we could do and that so it's, it's the same section but that wasn't my question anyway though that was your question or was, was not? not okay oh. um, well, I, well let me answer one okay. at a time okay. normally when you've got a, a frangible section a, a weaker section um, they'll sleeve it and, and, and to contain it and then they'll release the water and the next piece 20 30 40 50 feet down is equally as weak and that's or, or, or 10 feet down or 10 feet so, again, That's they're, they're not, so it's, not, it's not fun for them either. As long as you have that old pipe there, it could break anywhere. Okay. And hopefully when we get the pressure under control, again, those pieces will be able to stand up until we can replace them. And then, um, you know, as I said, I, I'm not um, an engineer and I don't understand the situation, but um, I have health issues, and I have a concern to make sure that our water is safe. Are we testing our water? Do we have yes. any risk involved in drinking the water, you know, during these outages? I know one time in particular it said the water wasn't going to be turned off till 8 a.m., but I was up at 3 a.m., and we had no water. And when I turned it on, it was like a rusty black color that came out. I'm very concerned about that, and is there anything we should be doing special? I don't hear any boil alerts. I only hear run your and, cold water. And, and you don't hear any because they they do look at that and, and, and make sure that it's okay. Obviously, when something is out and then you turn it back on, you do have to run your water for a while until all that discoloration goes through. But uh, as far as it being... Uh, you know, uh, able to be used, and, and it's not a health Thanks. risk. Yes. Just a comment. The <clears throat> boiled water alerts that you hear, when there's a problem with the water system and the pressure gets low, it allows product from the outside into the pipe. When there's no water pressure problem, what happens is it blows out. Everything blows out. 
and what you're picking up is uh, you have minerals and mineral deposits that build up in these these lines over the years and they get kind of rattled loose when you have a break and as long as there isn't a reduce in pressure that allows any kind of contaminate in the pipe you should have nothing to worry if you have a dark or rusty colored water number one run your water until it clears up number two don't wash your clothes with that dirty water because it'll stain it <laughs> but i don't think there's an issue we have the water tested regularly here and <clears throat> we always meet the standard every month we have a test and we have that process come through and we send it out to the labs the water is is viable and it's good it comes from a reliable source from the city of detroit well actually it's from great lakes water service it, it's we have no we have no qualms with that as long as when you'll get a boil a water boil alert when that pressure drops if that pressure drops and we're concerned that something comes into that pipe you will get that alert and you need to follow that until that alert's lifted but we don't have that problem our problem is we've got so much pressure it's blowing it out and that's what's <laughs> causing most of the damage sure that makes you feel better yeah. but yeah, yeah. 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 it does <laughs> thank you very much i appreciate it all right further up mr clark Woody Clark, Park Lane. Uh, when are we going to have meetings on roads? Are we going to have any meetings, or are we just going to sneak up on us? Uh, yeah, there. Come to the DPS meeting tomorrow, uh, and and uh, we'll we'll fill you in on that. Okay. Uh, we are we are supposed to have some open houses on that. Okay. Uh, water's Edge. Uh, there's rocks in the entrance way and they bounce out. I went to Wayne County, they won't touch it. So it's up to us to fill it in with asphalt so we don't bounce the rocks. Okay, so there's uh, one, two, three driveway entrances. Where at, Woody? Huh? Where at? Coming in from Belleville. All three entrances? I know of two that they bounce. Just on the two on the sides, I know they bounce out. And then they, what they do is they hit the bottom the bottom of the car so it's not okay. cool i mean we can fix them just yeah, we'll, we'll du duly noted we'll uh, we'll look at it take a look at it okay now we're going south on uh, parkway no west to the south bridge Pe people making left turns to go to the water people try to go around the people that are sitting there yep there's a big hole there. They bottom out there, too. They can put more asphalt in there and take care of the problem. Because we wait for Wayne County, they ain't coming. So uh, there is not a, that, that's a, that's a shoulder pass? I don't, yeah, don't think that's pass. recommended it's not anywhere. It's done, but everybody does it. But at Waterway? Yeah, for, it, yeah, it waterway. must be right well, around Waterway. Yeah, yeah, right waterway. That's waterway. Yeah. Yeah. Right there at Waterway, they go around, because the guy's trying to turn and mm -hmm. he can't turn yet. <clears throat> Yeah, that, that's, that's, well, they can't yeah. do that, but they do it. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't asking for police. I was asking for asphalt. Big difference. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We try. Uh, hold there, people. Bottom up. We gotta be the roads. Okay. 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 We were doing real well. Doing. Here we go. Okay, now, Monsanto was just fined $289 million for somebody in California. Are we going to ban Monsanto? Because we banned the blacktop. You completely lost me. I have no idea which. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, well, a man. Oh, let you elaborate. A man was working in California, and he was working with Monsanto's Roundup. Okay. He went to court and he got fined the California got fined two hundred and eighty nine million dollars. You didn't heard about it? No. No, I I mean I, I, I nothing surprises me in the courts because because they banned it because the warm warm of a known cancer risk. Okay. Now one more, a couple more here. We got uh, the dirty truth about bathroom dryers. 
when they, the automatic dryers that come up, they've got dirt in them and they get, go on your hands. But a lot of people out there in businesses want to save money so they use a hand dryer. Okay, now we don't use them here, that's good. Um, all right, I'm going to use a bleep in this routine. My choice early in the life was either to be a panel pan player in a bleep house or a politician. To tell you the truth, there's hardly any difference. Harry S. Truman. Okay, this one might rake you up. The NRA kills zero people per day, receives zero taxpayers' dollars. Now, this has ripped off my car. Planned Parenthood kills 887 babies per day, and one every 90 seconds receives 500 million taxpayers' dollars. Liberals think that's our age evil. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Moving on. I guess Mr. Lemoyne's next. <laughs> you can't wait. <clears throat> A very tough act to follow. Good evening. Uh, Steve Lemoyne Hampton. Uh, real simple um, ask if, for your consideration. I know I emailed the supervisor and clerk and Brian today, so thank you for listening. But definitely would like to see the board packets online. It's been a number of years since you've had them online. I remember when I was a first time resident here um, early many years ago. I believe they were online, but it'd be nice for the public to see these board packets and put that please back available for us at growsteel.com. Thank you, Mr. Lemoyne. Other comments? Uh, Mr. Heil. Mr. Heil. He, he deferred to you, so so I think he's saving a good one. Bill Heil, uh, East River Road. We've heard some interesting points of view expressed here this evening. On the one hand, there's an opportunity to spend a substantial sum of money for something that would be very nice and very enjoyable. On the other hand, we've heard people express a need for real expenditure because they have some real needs that are of very strong concern to them. Somewhere in the middle, we've talked about the fact that we have impact occurring on our welfare by what goes on at McLeod and also with the bridges. I'm happy. Uh, that you've been able to start planning. And I'm encouraging you to do a significant increase in that because we really don't know, if we look at any one of these issues, exactly what the exact circumstance is, how much of it uh, is required uh, from our pockets to make it work. We need, we, we need to know what needs to be done, who's going to pay for what. We also know that the county, when we talk about bridges, it's legally their responsibility. It's legally their responsibility for the roads. We also know that there are pots of money set aside for those responsibilities, and we know that they're inadequate to take care of everybody in the county. I think we need to get a grip on a clear understanding financially of what those impacts are. And I think we need to get those clear before we spend substantial sums that might have been needed for other uses that were considered very significant. You can look at things from a variety of viewpoints and see merit in all of them, and sometimes it's a tough decision to make one way or the other. I don't know why, but at the end of this I'm saying let's get a grip, okay? I don't mean that in an insulting way. It's just the best way I can find to articulate it. But use care. I can't comment on the specifics of this thing you were having a meeting on because there's nothing that I have specific knowledge of. But be careful because we have to watch our expenditures. I think that another suggestion would be that we watch and say, what benefit do we get for the dollar that we spend? And is that the most pressing priority that we have today? That, that is very real for where we are. These pipes, I understand they're to be pressure tested sometime this year. Uh, has that pressure test occurred yet or is that outstanding? Pressure tests are what? Our water pipes. I talked with Bill Caustic one time walking out of this meeting, and every certain number of years, it doesn't happen every year, but this year we're supposed to have a pressure test run. <laughs> this is not, I'm not trying to be funny, I'm laughing. It's, maybe we've had our pressure test already, okay? And, and, and 
I, I'm not trying to be a, a comedian with that. I mean, maybe I'll this is. To, I'll have to talk to Mr. Yeah, Costa. I, 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 right. I, I have no. But I, the thing is that th that kind of a situation. I mean, if, if we have a segment that has a break here and 10 feet later is a break there and another 25 feet the day after, it's not hard to imagine several others like that. And that pressure test could reveal where we were most likely to have those breaks. And that's where we'd spend our first repair dollar and figure out ways to fund it for the future. That's the kind of suggestions I'm making for serious consideration in the future. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Heil. Now, <laughs> Officer Counts. Evening, Kevin Counts. I'm the president of the Girls Hill Police Officers Association. It's recently come to my attention that the township has attempted to alter the authority of the police commission as well as the chief of police to hear grievances. Uh, once it was brought to my attention, I filed a Freedom of Information Act request with the township, trying to gain information on that decision, so I can decide what to do is on our end of things, since that is the the bodies that are tasked with hearing our grievances are by contract. Um, I picked up that FOIA request after I think it was about 12 days or so. Mr. Frail worked very hard to, to fill it. I'm not complaining about the timeline. However, when I picked it up, there were two documents in that FOIA. I requested all communications between this board, the police commission, the chief of police, and Mr. Room. When I picked up that FOIA, I was told that it was denied in part under attorney-client privilege. Um, to the best of my knowledge, there is no pending litigation about the police commission or their authority. It was simply a consultation with the township attorney, the township hired attorney re here to represent the township about governance. That is not attorney-client privilege information. It's not protected. I expect the township to adhere to the FOIA law. I will, this is one of the, the bodies that can, I can appeal to. The other is the court. I'm here today to tell you I'd like that FOIA filled. I'd like the law adhered to and I would like it done within the next five days, which is the time frame that a FOIA needs to be filled when it's submitted. If not, I'll be seeking legal recourse to the courts to have it filled. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Counts. Other public comment? Mrs. Walker. Uh, Kathy Walker, Thorpe Court. Three more weeks, guys. Three more weeks before we kayak. I hope people are going to come out. We've been we've been doing very well this year. We've gotten a lot of press, and we even have a picture in the new profile with our favorite rec director. Yay, Kim! So I grabbed her and threw her down in a kayak and made her sit there. But anyways, it's been a good year. We've had a lot of people. Uh, it's, it's done. A, she's done a beautiful job. It's so clean down at at uh, Water's Edge now. It's just really. Such a marked improvement, I can't even believe it. And clean, the, the, uh, the stones are off of the uh, green carpeting, so you have no problem launching. And we've had a great time. So three more weeks. Uh, we finish the day after Labor Day officially. So come on down, everybody, and you'll have a great time kayaking around Grow Seal. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Other comments from the public present? All right, I see none offered. Um, pardon? No, no, we're not adjourning. We're going to recess it to close session. So, we will be going to will for the, the the public portion of the meeting with a well. Let's I'll entertain a vote to retire to close session. So moved. Okay, I'll give the I'll give I'll it to second the, it. I'll give it to the treasurer and uh, just second by Trustee Budney. Um, I guess we'll do another roll call vote. Those in favor of going into closed session, and the supervisor will vote aye. Mr. Treasurer, aye. Madam Clerk. Aye. Uh, Mr. Budney? Aye. Mr. Malvesto? Aye. Uh, Mr. Nelson? Aye. Mr. Bletcher? Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. We're going into closed session after a short recess, and uh, the vote was at 58. We will convene after a short recess in the pressure cooker. So, everybody, thanks for coming tonight, and uh, we'll see you in September. Thank you.